let's worship the King of Kings. Let's worship our Redeemer, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the Jehovah Jireh, the one who opens and no man can shut. And when he shuts, who dare to open? Heavenly Father, we join the 24 elders this morning to say thou alone art worthy to receive glory to receive honor to receive adoration thank you father for the gift of life thank you for making us here another sunday thank you for christ in us the hope of glory thank you for the battles that you have won for us we appreciate your goodness thank you for your great mercy your great love and your great faithfulness over the years father to you alone be the glory to you alone be the honor. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for Christ who died for our sins and who rose for our justification. Lord, take all the honor, take all the glory. And this money again speak to our hearts. Bless your people, save souls. Heal the sick, set the captives free. Silence storms and put the devil to shame. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And the saints of God say a powerful and praise the name of the Lord. Somebody is going to go home with the greatest miracle this morning. Shout it thunderous, hallelujah. Amen. We want to pray. Good morning, church. I want to pray from Isaiah 45, and we begin from verse 1. Isaiah 45 from verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand have hold him, to subdue nations before him. This week, God will go before you to subdue nations. And I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two little gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I decree this way that shall be opened doors for you. Amen. Verse 2, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Amen. I will break in pieces the gates of brass Amen. and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Amen. I will give thee the treasures of darkness Amen. and hidden riches of secret places Amen. that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. I want to pray. Let's say, my Father and my God. In the name of Jesus, Father, go before me this week. Lord, subdue nations for me. Lose the lens of kings for me. Let there be open doors for me. Father, go before me. Make the crooked places straight. Break in pieces the gates of brass. Cut in sunder the bars of iron. Father, give me treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, this week, go before me. Make a way for me. Every, every giant, subdue them, O Lord. Give me breakthrough in every area of life. Open doors. In the mighty name of Jesus. Prayers. Maka sekera bobo. Uriya shasha sekera gaga. Moko sekera baba sekera baba. Father, we come to you on this holy altar. Father, go before us this week. Subdue nations for us. Father, subdue nations for us. Subdue every plan of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Lose the loins of kings. Lord, Father, let there be open doors. Open the heavens for us. Go before us, O Lord. Make every crooked place straight. Break in pieces the gates of brass and cut so that the bars of iron. Give us treasures of darkness and hidden riches of, of no secret places. Silence every storm. Let there be peace in our home. Let peace reign. Bring home difficult children. In the mighty name of Jesus, destroy the counsel of the enemy this week. Let grace and mercy prevail for us. Makasi kira bobo sokura baba. Sheke sheke rika bobo sokura baba. Speak to this week. That this week will be a week of joy for you. A week of abundance grace. A week of open doors. A week of high favor. In the name of Jesus. Go with silence storms. There shall be peace. Your going out is blessed. 
and your coming in is blessed. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Even as we listen to your word, let your word find a place in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. And the saints say, powerful. See standing, we read the word together. My text today is Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that, that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created in him, male and female created he then. Can the saints say amen? Yeah. Psalm 82 verse 6. Psalm 82 verse 6. I've said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Then let's jump to the New Testament. John 10, 34 and 35. John 10, 34 and 35. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your Lord? I said, Ye are gods. If you call them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Father, thank you for your word. Be upon your word and bless your children. Save souls. Heal the sick. Set the captives free. Silence tongues. Put the devil to shame. Let your people go on with joy. In Jesus' name. Please, you can be seated. Briefly, I want to speak on the topic, ye are gods. Maybe she some people and, and then tell them, oh, ah, you are a God. You may say, Pastor, are you talking blasphemy? Of course not. We are we read in Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says that. You have been made in the image of God. Amen. Then Psalm 82 verse 6 says, ye are gods. And the master himself said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. So the Bible declares that we children of God, we are gods and we are children of the most high. Amen? Just like the offspring of a dog is a dog. When the goat gives birth, his child is a goat. The child of a cow is a cow. So when God gives birth to children, they are what? Gods. First John 1 John 1.12. that John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we are created in the image of God originally before the fall of man. We are supposed to have the characteristics of God. And his, and his, you know, disposition, and possibly his power. That's why Joshua, you knew that he was a God, was able to command the sun and the moon to actually stand still, because he knew who he was. In John 10, 12 to 14, John 10, 12 to 14, sorry, Joshua 10, 12 to 14. Joshua 10, 12 to 14. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day, when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed. And the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasha? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. As to take your position on our journey to eternal prominence, may God hearken to your voice. Amen. The essence of our being regenerated is for us to be brought back into the position we lost in the garden of, of you know, Eden. For us to have the nature of God in 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4, it says, according as his divine power, had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and unto godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and, and to no virtue. We are by are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, 
that by this you may be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of, you know what? The divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Every Christian, every child of God, is supposed to exhibit the nature of God. And the devil knows this, hence he tries to keep you at the level of humanity. But as from today, we will take our position in Christ. First John 4, 17, First John 4, 17, the B part of it says, because as he is, so are we in this world. Can we say that together? But as he is, because as he is, so are we in this world. Can you say with a lot of confidence? Maybe it says yourself. As he is, so I am in this world. So you are supposed to be the image of God in conduct, disposition, character, and power. Amen? And for you to do that, for God to manifest himself in you, for you to enjoy the fullness of God, the soul life of God, for you to operate in power as a child of God, you must live holy. Amen? It must be like father, like son. In 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, but as he which I'll call you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it will be ye holy, for I am holy. And you have to come to the level of being crucified with Christ if you want to operate as a God. Amen? You have, to be, you have to come to that level that you will be crucified with him, that you can manifest fully the life of God. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the Lord, then Christ is dead in vain. It is not enough for you to simply believe. You must die to save for Christ to live through you. It is when you are crucified with him that you can experience the fullness of God. It can then manifest in you fully and invest its best in you. Amen? To be crucified is not an easy process. Imagine Christ for him to get the power and to release the power to us, he has to, he has to be crucified on the cross of Calvary. So when you say you want to be crucified with Christ, you have to take yourself to the cross and nail yourself to the cross. What are you to nail to the cross? One, you have to nail your flesh to the cross. You have to die to flesh and sin. Romans 6.6 6. Romans 6.6 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Can the saints say amen? amen? So for you to manifest the fullness of God, you have to take yourself to the cross and nail yourself to the cross, and then you must be crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, so that you will no longer serve sin. You have to die to sin and the flesh. Galatians 5.24. Galatians 5.24. And they that, have, that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Amen? And they that are Christ, if you say you are a child of God, you have the responsibility to crucify your flesh with the affections, with the profane, mundane things that you are fighting in your heart. It is your responsibility to crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts. Don't say anybody made you to, to sin. It is after you have conceived sin, then you give back to it. You are nurturing it. You are meditating on it. You are ruminating on it. You are enjoying it until you carry it out. So you have to resolve that you have to crucify the flesh because the flesh will always raise its head with the affections 
and lost. Can the saints say amen? amen? That means you have to crucify your sinful inclinations and your sinful desires and put them to death. The flesh refers to the part of you that seeks pleasure in things that oppose God's will. The flesh wants to seek pleasure in things that oppose what? God's will. He wants to drink champagne. You say the alcohol is 3%. Hello? He wants to wear things that are not permissible in church, that children of God are not supposed to wear. He wants to go to the club and be a child of the devil. That will not be yours. So you have to resolve. It's a strong determination that I want to manifest as God. Amen? That I want to crucify the flesh and the affections thereof. Being crucified with Christ involves daily dying. Paul says, I die daily. Amen? To sinful desire so that Christ's nature can manifest in you. So for you to be crucified, everything that is sinful must be dealt with so that you can walk in newness of life. Romans 6.4. Romans 6.4. Therefore, we are buried with him by, by, you know, baptism into death. Can we say into death? Unless you die, not physically, I mean your will, your desires, your lusting, your sinful desire die, God cannot manifest in you. So we are living below what God expects from us. So the devil come and pee on us and do all kinds of things on us because we don't have the power that we should have. The church has lost power because of our sinful inclinations. So we are not working as gods again. A child of God must be able to look at the devil in the face and say, sickness, I command you, in the name of Jesus, I don't want to unran my house. I give away quick notice, and they will say it with authority and power, because you have been given power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Can the saints say amen? amen? So, the, the you know, question of the flesh is essential, because sin separates us from God. It, it, it is through the death to the flesh that we are freed from the bondage of sin and can walk in newness of life. Can the saints say amen? amen? Your goal should be that you want to be transformed into Christ's image, into the image of God. The ultimate goal of being crucified with Christ is transformation and being conformed into his image. Amen? Romans 8.29 Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine it to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. People should see you and see Christ in you. You should carry the glory, the, the you know, splendor, the majesty of Christ anywhere you go. Can the saints say amen? amen. Mami Joe came to America and normally... It, it, it came, she came to Maryland. So we went to receive her at the airport. But that day, we were late. <laughs> so she sat down quietly waiting for us. And the man came to her and said, you're a child of God. She said, yes, how do you know? He said, everything I see you represents the, the you know, glory of God. Clap for the Lord if you want to. <laughs> when people see you, what do they see? in your conduct, in your disposition, in the way you talk, in the way you even dress, that half of the bath is even naked, what do they see? Do you represent Christ in all that you do? Or, through you, people have said, no, if this is what Christianity is, then I don't want to be a child of God. Today, may you make up your mind to be transformed into the image. So our desire is to be conformed, to be transformed into the image of God. This transformation allows you to walk in his power, amen, in his love, and in his authority. As you are no longer bind, bound by your former life. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 
but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into his, the same image from glory to glory. May you move from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. As you conform to Christ through the fact that you crucify your old self, you become more like him in every aspect of your life, reflecting his holiness, his compassion, his love, and his power. How do I get myself conformed to the image of God? Complete surrender to God's will. Complete what? Surrender to God's will. This represents the ultimate, the ultimate act of surrender. Just as Jesus surrendered his life to the will of the Father on the cross, you too must surrender your lives, your will, your desires, and plans to God. Amen? Amen. Matthew 16, 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen? Amen. Self-denial is crucial if you want to die to self. It involves letting go of control over your lives and allow, allowing God to direct your steps. It is, it is through this surrender that you allow Christ to live in you and through you. Only when you, you are fully surrendered to God's will can you experience his divine power, his divine purpose and plans in your life. Amen? How do I conform to his will to be turned into the image of God? Holiness and purity. Can we say that together? Amen. Being crucified with Christ involves both holiness and purity which are important aspects of a believer's transformation. This involves the call to live a life that is pure and set apart for God. In this process, the old sinful nature is crucified, and then you want to align with his will. This process leads to a life of purity, where, you're not, where you are no longer controlled by worldly desires, but instead seek to live in a way that pleases God. You have a desire that you want to please your Redeemer and your Maker. Second Corinthians 7 verse 1. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Can the saints say amen? amen? It is very important for you to know that purity must come before power in the life of a believer. I will say that again. God wants you to live in authority, dominion, and power. But for you to, to not do so, purity is mandatory. Purity must come first before power. Amen? Before you can walk in the authority and power that Christ had promised us, your heart must first be purified by being crucified with him. The cleansing of your hearts from impure desires and the removal of worldly attachments, there are necessary steps in for you to experience the fullness of God's power. Second Timothy 19 to 21. Second Timothy 19 to 21. Nevertheless, the foundation of God's standard sure. Having this said, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart, depart, depart from iniquity. Don't transfer your responsibility to God. Delay cannot depart from me. I cannot depart from him. It is me that must resolve that I want to carry the power of God. I want to live in authority and dominion. Depart is an active verb. Nobody can do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Can the saints say amen? amen? Let everyone that wants to walk in power depart from iniquity. 20. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. You will not be a vessel unto dishonor. Amen. What pains me there is that people may be working for God and they are vessels unto dishonor. Because he said, my house is great, so I, I will just leave them alone. In the great house, there are all kinds of what? Vessels. Vessels of honor and vessels unto what? So you can still be working for God, and God said, well, let me just leave him alone, whether he will change. He's very patient, 
he endures long, and then you do know that you are a vessel unto dishonor. I feel that there will not be any vessel of dishonor in our midst. You now say that, but it's not giving you a chance in verse 21. If a man therefore who knows that is a vessel unto dishonor, purge himself from this, I will change him, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. So that vessel must do two things. One, it must resolve to depart from iniquity. Secondly, it must purge himself from every uncleanliness. Amen? Without purity, the power of God cannot flow through you fully. Because God's power requires a clean vessel through which to operate. Amen? Open your heart to be purified if you want God to invest his power in you. Purity always precedes power. You have to align with God so that he can invest his best in you. It is after we are crucified with Christ that we can walk in the power, authority, and glory that God has designed for us as his children. Am I communicating this morning? You are too quiet on me. Huh? Okay. Well, it's a serious matter. Because I want us to actually live in power. Amen? Amen. Every child of God must be able to command authority. Amen? Amen. Must be able to live in dominion. Must be able to rub shoulder with anybody in the world without being proud. Amen? Amen. Because God is your father. Can the saints say amen? Amen. So we've dealt with being crucified. If you fully are a child of God, you should keep yourself pure. Amen? First Timothy 5.22. First Timothy 5.22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other, other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Who will keep, who, who will keep himself pure? Nobody can do it for you. Don't transfer your responsibility to anybody. It is you that will keep yourself pure. It all depends on what you want. You are the architect of your own fortune. Amen? You say you want to operate in power, in dominion, live a life of dominion, and live till a good life. He said, my son, attend to my words. It will be health and life to your flesh. Amen? So what you become is what... You do by yourself. You lay the foundation of power by purity, holiness, and also righteousness. Can the saints say amen? amen? One lady came to our office years back, and uh, she was she was barren for about seven years. So we prayed. She got she got pregnant, and then she came to the office. They said they wanted to remove the pregnancy. I said why? I said there are a lot of fibroids, and the child cannot survive. I said go. By the time you get to the doctor, the fibroids should have disappeared. Say, Pastor, you won't pray. I said, Go. By the time you get to the past, to the to the no doctor, the fibroids should have disappeared. Liars will not enter heaven. She went to the doctor, no more fibroid. <laughs> Thank you for, for no clapping. But you can walk in that authority. You, you can do, do what? I, I, another came, a man. He couldn't perform. I'm sure you have had that test. He couldn't perform his marital functions. So I prayed. I said, when you now get home, you should have been healed before you, before you get home. When you get home, go and perform your marital functions. He said, should I go and see the doctor? Or oh. he said, you have canceled my prophecy and my declaration. I said, kneel down. I'm going to pray again with authority. I prayed with authority. I said, now go back home and perform your marital functions. Today, he has three children. There's no need coming for you to come and queue up in that office. There is this story of this woman. It's a true story. In fact, Daddy Gio told us the know story. She was barren, and the pastor was ministering to those who are, who are barren in church. They were consuming, they were having children. So this woman did not even conceive. So one day the pastor called her and said, Madam, what is the challenge? I've been praying for everybody. They are conceiving, they're having children. I uh, said, mm-hmm. 
And I told you Nawao. Do, do you know the meaning of you know of you know Nawao? He said, My story is very serious. So Pastor said, What is your story? He said, As an unbeliever, I lived a reckless life. So I've had so many abortions. So in the process, they have to take out the entire womb. Uh, pastor said, Okay, I don't know that. So Pastor prayed. So when the pastor sees that coming, the pastor will dodge. <laughs> so one day, the woman went to cry to God. Before she had been looking unto pastor, instead of looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of her faith, she cried unto God in the night. She prayed her heart to God. Pastor is even neglecting me. When, I, when, when, she, when he sees me, he will now dodge. Ah, God, is a, God is a very faithful God. According to Jew, Jesus came in the night with his skin, with an animal skin, wrapped up the old wound with the animal skin. Jesus did a, you know, surgery for her. According to Jew, she conceived and she had children. Clap for the Lord if you want to. Stop looking unto men. The best man is still a man. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Learn to live holy. Learn to live pure. Have a, have a clean heart. The same power the pastor has, you have the same power. You are a child of God. You are not a wimp. The Bible says, ye are gods. And you can live in authority and power. Can the children of God say a powerful amen? First John 4.4. 4. 1 John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in the pastor. Eh? Then say it to yourself. <laughs> say it with a, with a lot of confidence. That is in, that is in the world. So the great one, the greater one lives in you. And the only way you can allow him to function it's when he finds your hearts pure. Amen? Brethren, you have been made kings and priests. Amen? In fact, the Lord of the whole universe lives in you. Hence, in every situation, there's no cause for you to fear. Instead, you should begin to exercise and take authority over situations and over circumstances. Luke 10, 19, that's we read before Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power. Say to yourself, say, I have, I have power. Confess it with boldness. Say, by your idea, you could not ask power. <laughs> say, I'm not a wimp. I have power to tread on serpents, scorpions, over some power of the enemy. So, why are you afraid? One small witch will come and be harassing you at night, and then you will be now shaking. The lowest in the kingdom of darkness. He said they are giving you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Can the saints say amen? amen. And Romans 8.37 Romans 8.37 says, Nay, in all these things, in all these challenges, in all these circumstances, we are more than conquered through him that you know loved us. I, I write poems. I just like to write poems. When we gave back to Orion, I wrote a poem, My Joy. Now that I'm 70, I wrote a poem, My Triumphs are more than my challenges. Because in, nay, in all these things, by your idea, you can use more than conquerors through him that loves him. Say to yourself, say, nay, in all these things, I'm more than conquerors through him that loved him. You have to have courage. God was telling Joshua, I've given you the land, but be strong and courageous. And God said it three times. He said, you are going to face challenges, but Joshua, for you to conquer the land, be strong and be what? And be courageous. Look at situations in the face. 
and say, I will conquer you. Every little thing, you should not be afraid because you have a dynamo inside of you. Remember, you are called to exercise spiritual authority through prayer, faith, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Stand firm in your position as a child of God. Amen? Amen. I will say stand firm in my position. Or I will stand firm in my position as a child of God. Thirdly, also because of the fact that the triumph God lives in you, you should not live in defeat, but live in power and victory. Being God's also implies that you are called to live victorious life, free from fear and every defeat. Can the saints say amen? amen. In fact, you are to reign. You are, you are, you are to do what? Amen. Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gifts of righteousness shall reign in eternal life. Eh? Shall reign in life. Can we say shall reign in life? By one Jesus Christ. As, the ch- as a child of the, of the Most High, you are supposed to reign. Amen? Amen. And not only that, you have the town God living with you. John 14, 23. The town God lives with you. John 14, 23. If a man loves me, and I know that you love Jesus, that's why you are here. He will keep my words. And my father will love him. And my father will love him. I love that, that God loves me. And my father will do what? And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they will come and make their abode with him. Those of us who are favorable children, we know what love is. If you are the favorite of your family, you know what love is. Everybody showers their love on you. Before you ask for this, they say, okay, you want more? So you learn to appreciate God's love. Amen? Because he said, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we will come and live with you. Amen? Therefore, we should live a life of rest, a life of peace, a life of authority, a life of dominion. And the saints say, Amen. Amen. Psalm 8, 4 to 6. Psalm 8, 4 to 6. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Tell somebody, God is, God is mindful of you. It means God is thinking about you. And the son of man that thou visitest him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things, can we say all things, on thy his feet. To, to have dominion means to have supreme authority or control. We call it sovereignty. You have dominion. You have supreme authority. God has created you to be masters of situations and circumstances. You are all MSC holders. Masters of situations and circumstances. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> so don't throw away your certificate. You all have MSC from Harvard University. Praise the name of the Lord. If that be the case, you are created to be a winner. You are to radiate God's glory, power, and majesty. In life, you shall not be defeated again. And you are not alone in the battle. There are angels fighting along with you. Hebrews 12, 22. Hebrews 12, 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of who? Angels. Then Psalm 34, verse 7. See, talking about angels. Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. By his grace, you will no longer be bound by the power of darkness. 
Then Psalm 91, 11, and 12. Still talking that you have angelic ministrations. Psalm 91, 11, and 12. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Let thou dash thy foot against his soul. Against his tone. And because you are carrying the divine indwelling, God dwells in you, there is divine presence anywhere you go. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Even when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, Jesus was there with him. The king who did not believe in God believed that Jesus would even deliver him. The king went there early in the morning. He said, Daniel, your God that you serve, was he able to deliver you? Daniel said, yes, king. And Daniel came out, and the enemies were thrown into the lion's den, and the enemy ate them up. Learn to live in faith. Know that you are not alone in this journey, because there are angels watching over you. The Bible says you carry the divine presence of God. Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is there with you. As a song we used to sing years back, God is here with me. God is here with me. He is with the wings of the cherubims. God is here with me. He is with the wings of the cherubims. God is here with me. Beat your chest. God is here with me. Live on a daily basis knowing that God is your refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Troubles will come, but they will go. They are never permanent. How then can I operate in this realm of God as children of the Most High? We have said it. Crucify yourself. Crucify the flesh with the affections and loss thereof. Amen? Amen. Know God. Study the word. Do what? Study the word. Lupe, can you read for me Psalm 104? Then I will just end from there. The whole of Psalm 104. When you know God fully, you know who your father is, you can rest on his everlasting arms, knowing that this God that we are talking about is everything in the world. You hold the old world in his hands. Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Can we say, my God is very great? My God is very or great. Or let's say, my father is very great. My father is very great. Go ahead. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretched out the heavens like a curtain? Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariots? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Who maketh his angel spirit, his ministers, a flaming fire? Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys. Unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over. That they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for, cat for the cattle and herbs for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the field are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which has planted, which he had planted, where the birds make their nest. As for the stalk, the fir trees are her house, 
the high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth is going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is light, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The, long, the young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go to the ships. There is a Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. This wait all upon thee, that thou mayest, mayest give them their meat in season, that thou givest them that thou givest them they gather. Thou openest thy hand, and they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, and they are troubled. Thou takest away thy breath, they die, and return to the dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and he trembleth. He toucheth the hills, and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God where I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you know why? We are free because we don't know God. We are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, but we don't do what? And to know God, you have to study His Word. Yes. Meditate on Psalm 104. You see how great your God is. He laid the foundation of the earth and anchored where nobody knew. That's why you should study the Word. 2 Timothy 2.15, as I ran off. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You want to walk in power? You must set yourself apart from sin. Brethren, ye are gods. Are you conducting yourself as well? Or are you living less than that? The choice is in your hand. And from today, you can start to live a life of victory. As you resolve, as you make up your mind to begin to practice holiness, purity, righteousness, godliness, eating sin with a passion and loving righteousness. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Can we rise as we begin to thank him? The Bible says he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Let us begin to thank him for his word. The word of God is here and amen. His word is settled in heaven. As we are thanking him this morning, are you here? You have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can do so this morning. The Bible says anyone that comes to him, he will know we cast out. And maybe you have even compromised your faith. You have been living in the flesh. You have been living in sin. You can ask him for forgiveness this morning. You can ask him to cleanse you, sanctify you and give you a new beginning. You can ask that the blood will sanctify you, spirit, soul, and body, as that you want to begin to operate and also walk in power. Let's begin to thank him for his word. Let's begin to bless him. If you want to surrender your life to know Jesus, just, you know, raise up your hand. You are not yet born again. You want to say, just come into my heart, save my soul. Just raise up your hand and just wave it unto the Lord. You want to accept Jesus this morning as your Lord and you know, save you. You want your name to be written in that precious book of life. Just raise up your hand and just wave it unto him. That today you are crossing from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. And those listening online who want to accept Jesus, go to our website and also fill out the form. They begin to thank him for his word. They begin to, to, to bless him and worship.
somebody shout hallelujah. For further information, please visit rccgvictorytemple.org or call 301-352-0707.